Okay, so we got potential energy and kinetic energy that we'll talk about. Now, potential energy, well, that's really the, the energy of position, isn't it, in physics? Like EP equals MGH. Do you remember that formula? Well, okay, forget it. Because in chemistry, well, don't forget it. But in chemistry, we're going to be more concerned about not the energy of position, but the energy of composition. Really, it's all about bond energy and making bonds. So in chemistry, we're concerned about potential energy as it expresses itself in terms of heat, in terms of bond energy. Okay, so here's the thing about potential energy. If you've got water bonded together, so here's a couple water molecules, and when they're attracted to one another, uh, let's do that right, let's, let's, let's have the, 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 the partially positive end of a hydrogen being attracted to the partially negative end of a water molecule uh, to form a hydrogen bond. The bond that keeps water together to form a liquid and a solid, that would be an intermolecular bond, and that bond uh, right there, well, if we actually added energy to be able to break that bond, well, what would we be undergoing? A phase change, right? Or when these molecules come together, energy is released when a bond is formed, and that's phase change energy. Now, phase change energy or bond energy, that's a source of potential energy or a way to describe uh, uh, potential energy. Now, if we took this water molecule and then we added energy to break the intramolecular bond, snap, and be able to form, well, the hydrogens go off by themselves to form H2 and the oxygens actually bond up to form O2, that's disturbing the, that covalent bond there, that intramolecular bond, and that's going to be a chemical change. And then, of course, if we get right into the atom of, say, oxygen, and we disturb the nucleus where we actually perhaps even add enough energy to rip it apart, well, then we're disturbing nuclear energy, or actually, that's something called the strong force. So, all of those energies are potential energy. They're bond energies. And if you have a formula that you're going to use to be able to describe the amount of energy uh, for bond energy, whether it be chemical phase or nuclear, the formula number of moles times molar heat, NH, is a formula that will equal... Uh, the amount of heat that is absorbed or released. So, so NH is a good formula, and we're going to employ that in a couple of different ways here in chemical and phase changes. Now, here's the thing. What about when not just, not, just, not, not that, that, that energy is going to be expressed here in terms of, of bond energy, but how about when we just add energy to water and it warms up in temperature? Well, okay, then it undergoes a temperature change, but if the temperature is changing, and remember from kinetic molecular theory, that temperature is proportional to kinetic energy. So here's the thing. When you undergo a temperature change, that's a change in kinetic energy. Temperature change, the molecules are moving faster, higher temperature, or slower, and that would be lower temperature. Temperature and kinetic energy go together. Phase and potential go together. <laughs> And kinetic, eek, that goes together with temperature right there. Now, for a temperature change formula, well, we've got one of those. We've got a temperature change formula, and it's going to be mc delta t, where the mass of a substance times its specific heat capacity times the temperature change is going to equal the amount of energy that is either absorbed or released uh, during a temperature change. Now, what's the specific heat capacity? Quite simply, it's defined as the amount of heat um, that is required or, or released when one gram of a substance is raised in temperature or lowered by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. So if I take water, right, and I raise it up to, uh, uh, to take one gram of water and raise it up in temperature one degree Celsius, it, Celsius, it actually requires 4.19 joules of energy to do that or it's 4.18 depending on actually the temperature. But generally speaking, we use 4.19, well, here in Alberta anyway, a lot of places it's 4.18. 4.18 joules are required to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. That's the heat capacity. Now, most metals have very, very low heat capacities, a lot lower, maybe even some, some of them 10 times lower than water. Water actually takes a lot of energy, 4.19 joules, to raise one gram of it one degree Celsius. But a thing like, something like copper, requires about 0.38 or 0.39 joules of energy to raise it one, one gram of it, one degree Celsius. What does that mean? That means then that if you're adding energy to an, a, a certain quantity of energy 
to water and the same amount of energy to copper, the copper is going to warm up in temperature, if you have one gram of it, a lot quicker, let's say, than water will. So water actually warms up slowly and cools down slowly, which is a great moderator of temperature for our planet. Absolutely. So, kinetic and potential energy, let's take those formulae and let's use them in calculations uh, because there's a lot of them in this unit of study.